I'm Larry Walther. This is PrinciplesOfAccounting.com, Chapter 14. This module will look at the Statement of Stockholders' Equity. Now, the Statement of Stockholders' Equity, companies often present this statement in lieu of a Statement of Retained Earnings. So generally accepted accounting principles specifically require a Statement of Retained Earnings and disclosures, additional disclosures about changes in other equity accounts. As a practical expedient, many companies, indeed probably most public companies, find it more convenient to simultaneously satisfy both requirements by presenting a statement of stockholders' equity. So here's an example of a statement of stockholders' equity. It looks like a lot of information, but let me break it down. Let's just look at the first column. Here's the common stock account. At the beginning of the year, there was $20 million total par value of all the shares outstanding. And then during the year, an additional 3 million shares were issued, so we boosted the par value $3 million for those shares. And then toward the end of the year, there was apparently a stock dividend, which also caused an increase in the par value $1,150,000 to give us our ending stockholders' equity, $24,150,000. So that's one of the equity accounts. I'm not going to go through the analysis for each column, but there's also a column for paid in capital and excessive par. There's a column for retained earnings. I've got a column for treasury stock. And then I've got a column for the total stockholders' equity, which is a summation of the effects coming across. Let me call your attention next to the retained earnings column. Beginning balance was $11 million. It was increased by net income of $4 million and decreased for the cash dividend as well as the stock dividend, which triggered a debit to retained earnings to give us our ending retained earnings of $7,750,000. So the reason that looks very much like a statement of retained earnings is essentially it is a statement of retained earnings. It is the required statement of retained earnings embedded within the broader statement of stockholders' equity. The retained earnings column roughly corresponds to the statement of retained earnings. Companies often expand to include comparative data for multiple years. In my case, I had beginning of year balance and end of year balance. But companies will often include uh, a stacked presentation. So you may have two years ago, one year ago, and the current year. So in a glance, a fairly extended statement, but at a glance you can see the changes in all of the equity accounts for as many as three years at a time by looking at that expanded statement of stockholders' equity. Some accounts I did not include, other comprehensive income, the, other, the accumulated other comprehensive income might be another column you could find in the statement of stockholders' equity. Uh, if there was preferred stock, you might have a column for preferred stock. So there's actually quite a bit of content that could begin to occur in a statement of stockholders' equity. Under international accounting standards, the statement of stockholders' equity may be replaced by a broader statement of recognized income and expense. It would include adjustments for such things as asset revaluations that are acceptable in some parts of the world. Typically, it's supplemented with notes about information uh, or changes in other equity accounts.